So here's the next example, part B. So we have the second order differential equation d2y over dx squared plus dy over dx plus y equals 1 plus x. Okay, so immediately I'll call this double star. And let's make a note that our f of x is 1 plus x, so it's linear. So let's remind ourselves of step number one. So back to the screenshot. Step number one is to let f of x equal zero. Okay, so back to the paper and pen. So let's do that. In step number one, let f of x equal zero. So if I disregard uh, the term on the right hand side and replace that by zero, we're going to end up with d2y over dx squared plus dy by dx plus y and that is equal to zero. So I'm going to call that star. So let's remind ourselves of step number two. So remember, step number two, let y equal a e to the mx, a and m are constants. And using this, we, we calculate dy over dx and d2 over dx squared. So back to the paper and pen. So here is step number two. So y is a e to the mx. So dy by dx will be a m e to the mx and d2y by dx squared, so I want to differentiate again, it's am squared e to the mx, okay? So that takes us to the next step, step three. So let's remind ourselves of step three, back to the screenshot. Put the results for y, dy over dx, and d2y over dx squared into star, okay? So back to the paper and pen. Here is a star, so here's equation star. So let's put y dy by dx and d2y by dx squared into star. So if I put these results into star here, we're going to have d2y over dx squared, that is am squared e to the mx, okay, plus dy over dx. So plus dy over dx is a m e to the mx plus y, so plus, and y is a e to the mx, and that is equal to zero. Okay, so that takes us to the next step, step number four. So let's remind ourselves of step four. So cancel capital A, so capital A is a constant, so cancel the constant capital A, and as e to the mx is non-zero, we're gonna have our auxiliary equation. So back to the paper and pen, so let's cancel the a's, okay? And as e to the mx is non-zero, our auxiliary equation takes the form m squared plus m plus one is equal to zero. Now, we can't factorise, so we need to use our quadratic formula. So let's use the quadratic formula. So by using uh, the formula uh, m, in this case, that is equal to minus b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, so here's the quadratic formula. So in our formula, a is the coefficient of a, uh, m squared. So the coefficient of m squared is 1, so a is 1. b is the coefficient of m, and the coefficient of m is 1. Okay, so it's plus 1. And c is the constant. The constant in our quadratic is plus 1. So if I replace a, b and c in the quadratic formula, m will be minus b being 1 plus or minus square root b squared b is 1 so 1 squared minus the 4 a which is 1 c 1 also divided by 2 into a being 1 okay so if we simplify so let me simplify 
and we can have minus 1 plus or minus the root of okay 1 squared is 1 and 1 minus 4 from here so 1 minus 4 is minus 3 okay divided by 2 into 1 which is 2 okay now let me continue uh, along this line now to work out the root of a negative number we need to use i squared is equal to minus 1 okay so remember i is what we call it an imaginary number so we need to use i squared is equal to minus 1 to evaluate the root of minus 3 so in this case I'll have minus 1 plus or minus the root of if i squared is minus 1 that would make minus 3 3 i squared okay divided by 2 so you can rewrite minus 3 as 3 i squared since i squared is minus 1 and if we continue we can rewrite this as minus 1 over 2 plus or minus okay and the root of 3i squared, we can write this as the root of 3i over 2. Okay? So in this case, we have complex values for m. Okay? So let's go back to the screenshot to select one of the cases that we've got. So using the solutions that we have for m, let's figure out the case that we have. So remember the three cases okay it's not going to be case number one as we don't have real and different values for m it's not going to be case number two as we don't have coincident values it's going to be case number three we have complex uh, values here so in this case if for our values of the form k1 plus or minus k2i remember the form of the complementary function it's e to the k1x open a bracket a cos k2x plus b sine k2x okay so back to the paper and pen so k1 is going to be minus half and k2 is root 3 over 2 okay so k1 is the real part of this complex number k2 is the imaginary part of this complex number that takes us to step number five our choice for YCF so our YCF will be e to the power k1x remember a cos k2x plus b sine k2x okay so let's replace k1 and k2 so it's e to the power k1 we noted as minus half so it's e to the minus half x open a bracket a cos k2 is root 3 over 2 okay so it's going to be uh, root 3 divided by 2 x plus b sine k2 again which is root 3 over 2 x okay so in this case this is going to be the form of our complementary function uh, ycf that completes step five. Let's go to step number six. Let's remind ourselves of step number six. So back to the screenshot. So remember, we need to consider YPI and that depends on F of X. Let's go back to the paper and pen to observe what we have for F of X in the main differential equation that we have in question. Our F of X, remember, is 1 plus x so we have a linear for f of x if f of x is a linear of the form ax plus b where a and b are constants then we need to take y pi to be px plus q and our job is to work out p and q okay so uh, back to the paper and pen so our f of x is 1 plus x so we need to take y pi to be p plus q okay so that completes step six choosing uh, ypi let's move on to step seven back to the screenshot let's remind ourselves 
So using our YPI, let's work out dy over dx and d2y over dx squared. So back to the paper in pen. Our YPI is px plus q. So dy by dx, we want to differentiate px plus q. p and q are constants, bearing in mind. So we're just going to have p. And d2y by dx squared. So if we differentiate again, since p is a constant, when I differentiate again, we're going to get 0 for d2y by dx squared. Okay? So that takes us to step number 8. So let's have a reminder. Let's have a look at this screenshot. So put our results for y, dy over dx, and d2y over dx squared into double star. Remember, double star is the main equation that you have. Here is double star, remember. Here's the main equation in question. So let's put our results into this equation, double star. So we've got d2y over dx squared, and that being 0, plus dy over dx, so plus, and dy over dx is p, plus y, so plus, and our y is px plus q, and that is equal to 1 plus x on the right hand side. So what we need to do here is we need to group uh, group the terms on both sides. So we need to group the x terms and the constants uh, that we have on both sides. And then we'll equate the coefficients of the like terms. Okay. So if I group the x terms, I just have one x term here namely px on the left hand side and I already have an x term here so that's being grouped so I have an x term simply x on the right hand side and if I group the constants so on the left hand side I've got two constants p and q so let, let me keep them in a bracket and on the right hand side I have a constant which is 1 Okay, so I've grouped the x terms as well as the constants on both sides of the equation. Let's remind ourselves of step number nine. Remember, step number nine is to equate the coefficients of the like terms to calculate P, Q and R. Okay, so if we go back to the paper and pen, let's do that. So step number nine, let's equate coefficients of x and c means constants okay on both sides so firstly let me equate the coefficients of x on both sides so on the left hand side the coefficient of x is p okay so let me use a red pen and on the right hand side the coefficient of x is plus 1, so p is equal to 1 when you equate the coefficients of x, okay? Let me do the same with the constants, so c meaning constants. Let me take a green pen. The constant on the left hand side is p plus q. The constant on the right hand side is 1. Equate uh, the constants on both sides, p plus q is equal to 1. So we have two equations here. So if I put p is equal to 1 into the second equation, equation 2, I can work out the value of q. So let's do that. So if I put p is equal to 1 into this equation, I'll have 1 plus q equaling 1. Therefore, q, when I rearrange, is 0. Okay, so that is the value of q. Let's put them back into our YPI. So our YPI will then be PX, so RP is one, so it's gonna be one X, plus Q and Q is zero. Okay, so this is our YPI for this second order differential equation, okay? To work out the general solution for Y, add your YCF to your YPI, okay? So back to the paper and pen. So our YPI is X. Our YCF that we had earlier, here it is, 
it's e to the minus half x, a cos root 3 over 2x plus b sine root 3 over 2x. Okay, so let's work out our general solution based on those. So on step number 10, the general solution for y, y is going to be ycf plus ypi. So the ycf, so remember it's e to the minus half x, a cos root 3 over 2x plus b sine root 3 over 2x. So let's note that down e to the minus half x, a cos root 3 over 2x plus b sine root 3 over 2x plus and ypi we had x okay so plus x so that is the general solution to our second order differential equation for part b okay and that sadly ends the video so i hope you enjoyed the video if you did enjoy the video a like is very much appreciated